13 mobile web applications. Today we are going to be covering our last lesson and lecture in the entire course, but also our last lecture specifically on React.js. And this lecture will be very important in terms of your last assignment in this class um, before your final exam next week. So what we're going to do is use the code here that we worked on last week, actually the last two or three weeks um, with our to-do list app in React, and we're gonna add routing to it, okay? So um, I haven't actually told you what routing is yet. We'll talk about it in a sec here, but in terms of the assignment, um, you'll have uh, until next week to complete it. It'll basically be this website that we've built in class with routing, um, but you're going to use it on your website. So you're going to implement what we covered today on your website that you submitted again for assignment one and assignment two. Um, again, it can be about anything you could have. I know some of you guys have cat explorers. Some of you guys have puppy pickers. Um, so it can be about anything. It doesn't have to be like a fully finished Netflix or anything like that. But um, yeah, so you can download this code here from GitHub. We'll just get right into it. You can download this code, download zip, extract it, and then open uh, Visual Studio and open to this folder. Okay. so. Um, here I've got it in a thing called in class because I'm doing it with you guys, but you can call it whatever you want. Now, what we're going to want to do is in our terminal, this will take a second. So I'm going to do it now with you guys at the beginning in our terminal, you go terminal here up at the top, new terminal. We're going to type NPM install because you'll notice on GitHub that, uh, all the packages from node aren't uploaded. It makes it a lot faster to. Uh, just load the packages from package.json and basically package.json tells npm or node package manager to download all of these and then they're not uploaded to github and you don't have to waste all the time you know it's like thousands of dependencies so uh, instead we just exclude them from our github upload and then we just download them once we've extracted our github project so this is going to run for a minute here and while that's running i'm going to open up the powerpoint for today so uh, I'm actually going to stop sharing this screen because I'm going to run my PowerPoint on the other screen and I'll move my code over there too afterwards. Okay. So we're talking about routing navs and links in React.js. Now, for those of you who have used React before, what is routing? Can, ex can you explain what routing is to me? Um, or guess, you know, if you haven't used routing before, what is routing? To request or to a response. So yeah, it's it's something to do with like a request and response. <clears throat> so routing is specifically for uh, if you'd explore that a little bit more, request and response for what? Like what would you be loading or what would you be requesting? Or data. Data, yeah. And how do we view our data in a browser? that I don't know. So like on a browser, if I were to go to, uh, let me open this up here quick. See if I open up Netflix. <clears throat> I never said I could use Netflix at work, but here we are. Okay, so if I'm in Netflix here and I go from, you know, this page here, I'm on my list and then I go to movies, right? Um, and then I switch to my list you notice it never actually sends an HTTP request. Like I'm clicking and it's changing the page and everything, but it's instant here. So for our request and our response, we're loading data. And I was asking you how we view it. Well, how we view it is on a page. So routing is actually how we can manage multiple pages. You'll see now that I've loaded new and popular, it's an instant. It's like it's a desktop app. So routing, this is built with React and this is built with routing. Routing is how we can switch between movies and my list and it's instant, it doesn't send an HTTP request. So we're gonna learn how to do that on our, our own website. So to, uh, to recover, I guess, a bit about what I just said with Netflix. Routing is a special tool which actually watches changes in the URL and then it changes what's visible on your screen based on the URL. 
but it doesn't actually send a request to the server. It just reloads new components from React. It gives us a way of giving our users this illusion of routing between pages, but really uh, it's just installing a new dependency. It's a third-party package in the project, um, and it allows us to just uh, make it look like the pages are changing through a HTTP request, but really what's happening is it's just loading new components on the same index, index.html, right? Uh, so like here we have in Visual Studio Code, if I bring this over here, I think we've finished our NPM. Uh, we basically have in public, we have index.html and in index.html we have root, right? Right here. So that root page, that div ID in index.html, it has all our components. And when we route to another page, it just replaces all the old components with the new components. So it looks like the page changed. And that's what gives it this like snappy, fast response time that React apps are known for. Okay, so now in our code that we've finished installing, I'm just gonna run npm start and you guys should get the same thing as me. We'll just double check that your projects, your starter projects are the same as mine. And while that's running and loading, <clears throat> we'll keep going. Uh, through this. So in order to use routing, we have to install it with the node package manager uh, with the npm install command, and then you tell it which um, package you want to install. So we want to install react-router-dom, and then if we look at our package.json, we'll be able to see that react-router-dom is added. So we can run this. Um, I think it's still loading the server so i should probably wait a little bit here um running it on my local host i can also just i can terminate it and then we'll we'll actually install this first and then we'll run it okay so my bad so i just did control c to terminate and then it asked me what? yes or no and i did a yes yep so can Any you questions? please send that in chat over in uh, routing installation and yes this text here, npm install react router dom. You want me to send that in the chat? I can do that, one sec. The chat, okay. So you're gonna type npm install react-router-dom, okay? So let me do this. Zoom in this npm install react dash router dash dom. And what you'll notice when we hit enter, it's going to download another package. So it's downloading here the react router dom dependency from node package manager. I'm just going to ignore these vulnerabilities for now. Probably not wise, but it's looked like it added three packages in 11 seconds. So if we go to package.json now, you should be able to see or find on line, it's on mine, line 11. I have React Router DOM version 6, which actually just came out a couple months ago, which is kind of cool because uh, as I was getting this ready, all the stuff I was trying to find was from React 5. So you're actually le learning the most up-to-date syntax for React Router here, which is cool. Um, okay, so you should be able to see that. <clears throat> now that we've got that installed, we can just run npm start and start our server. Okay, so we should have router installed now, which means we'll be able to use it in our project. And then I'm just gonna run npm start. It'll start on my local host here. It's just loading, starting the development server, and it takes its time. We'll just bring it over here. And you guys can tell me if your app looks the same as mine. I'll just pause the recording here. Oh, never mind. There it is. I just didn't know how long it would take. So your app should look something like this. So here's my React app. It's a to-do list. Um, right now the text is just whatever I've typed in. And if I hit this button, I can click anywhere off the modal. Remember we coded the props to be passed from this cancel and confirm button and there's also a backdrop of this dark gray so that if I click anywhere off of this modal over on the gray, it also closes the pop-up. Cool, okay, so I saw some thumbs ups. It looks like you guys were on the same page. 
Okay, so that is loaded. <clears throat> Let's go back to the PowerPoint. So we know what routing is, or we know the rough idea of what routing is. So now what we want to do is we want to add something called pages. So basically, we've added this routing tool to our code, and it's going to allow us to watch for URL changes. And we have to tell this tool which component should be loaded um, as a page for, for which route or which URL link is displayed in the browser, right? So if you're at like example.com slash test, and then it changes to example.com slash new test, well, then we should probably load different components and they should be components that allow us to add a new test. So for all of this to be possible, we have to add a new folder to the components folder. So this is going to be at the same level as the components folder. It's under source. It's going to be a sibling folder to the components folder. Um, and we're going to call it pages. Okay, so I just right click on SRC and then add a pages folder. And then in the pages folder, we're going to just add a page called home.js, new page.js, and new second page.js. Okay, <clears throat> and I'll explain what's happening here in a little bit, but I'll show you what I'm doing here. So let me just zoom in so this is a little bit bigger for you guys i'm going to close the terminal close my package.json so on the right hand side i'm going to right click on this src folder do a new folder and the new folder will just be lowercase pages p a p a g e s okay and i'm going to now right click on pages and do new file and we're going to add three new files. The first one will be capital H, remember, with custom components. It has to be a capital because that's how React.js differentiates. So it's going to be capital home.js. I'm going to add two more. You can call these pages whatever you want. For this example, I'm going to do newpage.js with a capital N and a capital P. And then I'm going to do capital new second page.js. Okay, so we've got three pages in here. They're all empty. They're all open here. You can see nothing fancy going on. Okay, so <clears throat> the reason we've made it a, in a pages folder, okay, even though these are all going to be components themselves, it's good to differentiate and separate, you know, these components from our backdrop modal and to-do components versus our pages components. Right, it's good to differentiate that one component's going to be a page, and one component's actually going to just be a component that can be embedded in that component. Okay, technically, we'll build them the same way, no matter how we use them. But as a developer, it makes it easier for us to quickly find the right components that we're working on if we separate them into two folders, right? Components and pages. So in the pages folder, we've added three React components. And again, they're going to be built like every other component that's going to be loaded by this router. Okay, we've just, uh, the router that we just installed when the URL changes, right? Okay, so <clears throat> that's done. Next step in new page.js and new second page.js, we're going to just add some boilerplate code. Okay, so just the same way that we've made every component so far. is a function, right? A component is a function in JavaScript. And so we just do function and then we make it the same name as whatever .js file it is. So this is new page.js. So this is function new page. In my curly braces, I'm going to return my, remember my fancy JSX code. This is JSX, which is, it looks like HTML, but it's actually rendered as JavaScript. In there, I'm just going to have a div that says new page on it. And this one yes, is sir. new second page. Yeah. We have to do this for all three pages, right? For home, new page, and new second page. Um, on home, we're going to do something different. Okay. So, so just for on right new now, page. I have, to, I have to write it or not for now? On new page and new second page, we're oh, going to write okay. this. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm going to actually head over to the IDE, and you can follow along with me here. So in new page.js, okay, we're going to leave home empty for now. In new page.js, I'm going to do function because every component, right, in React is a function. And capital N, capital P, new page. Or 
open curly braces, and we have to return some JSX code. And we'll just put a title, new page, right? And then in order for this, actually this function to get exported into app.js where everything is rendered, we have to export that as the default component to get exported from this file. Okay, so new page.js looks like this. I'm gonna control C, and then I'm just gonna paste it into my new second page here. And in new second page, I'm just gonna add the word second uh, in all the places where it says new page on here. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do control V, I'm gonna paste it, and I'm gonna do new second page as the function name. I'm gonna give it the title of new second page, and I'm gonna export it as new second page. So it should look like that. All right, so new page and new second page now both have very basic functions Okay, so here's your code. It's in the PowerPoint slide four. Okay. Good. You can throw me a thumbs up when you guys are all caught up for that section. Cool. All right. So moving on. Now, in our app.js, we're going to move, okay, so this stuff here, this is the to-do list. Remember that we made it our custom to-do component and we pass it this prop of text, go grocery shopping, eat ice cream, finish React assignment. That's exactly what's being loaded right here, go grocery shopping, eat ice cream, finish React assignment. <clears throat> well, we're going to take that, this div to this div, I'm going to copy oh i'm actually going to cut i'm going to cut it and i'm going to paste it into home.js okay so what does this look like well we go to app.js we take this div everything here control x to cut it okay so now there's nothing in there and then I'm going to go to home and I'm just going to paste it in here for now. Well, actually home is going to be a component as well. So we're going to make it a function capital H home. All right. And then in the return, in the return, I'm going to paste what I just took. Okay. And then we have to export it as our default export default home. Okay. So it should look something like that. We'll still have to touch it up a little bit, but should be good. Okay. You can send me a little thumbs up when you guys have gotten that point. Continue. Right, so basically what we're doing here is we've made a page called home, a page called new page, and a page called new second page. And they're all their own components. And now I've taken all of the stuff that used to be on app.js, and I'm going to be able to route which page I want to show in app.js. So that's what we're going to work on next here. Okay, so now my home page will show a to-do list still. Okay, thanks for the thumbs up. Cool. Um, now my home page will still show a to-do list, but I can switch between home and new and new second whenever I want, right? And then only one of them will be rendered at a time. Are you good there, uh, Salman? For me to move on? Awesome. Okay, so we've taken the stuff out of app.js. Now, this may be a little bit confusing for you, but We've moved the stuff from app.js to home.js. We're going to leave app.js alone for this slide, and we're actually going to go into index.js. 
because index.js is actually what renders the app component. Okay, so I'm going to go into my Visual Studio code here and open index.js. And if we look in here, I'm just going to delete these comments so that's a little cleaner. Okay, we can see it's rendering. Remember, this is where we're rendering the app. And this app, okay, is going to be sent to the root element. And remember that root element that I was showing you earlier is in index.html right here on line 28. So app.js, whatever is in app.js is going to be rendered in the root from index.js right here. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we've got three components that are pages, right? So we've got home, new page, and new second page. We need to use the router tool that we installed earlier in class to define which page should be loaded when. And first of all, we want this to go to, um, first of all, we, we need this to go to index.js to wrap our app component, okay? We need to wrap our app component in something called browser router. And what that's gonna allow us to do um, is actually route between things on the app component. Okay, so I'm going to have to import browser router, or what we can do is we can just start typing browser router. And if I hit tab, if I hit tab here as I'm finishing this, you'll notice on line six, this just got added, right? So import browser router. I'm gonna put that and nest it in the app. And if I hit save, it just formats it with my prettier extension. So it should look something like this. So we've imported browser router, which is a component itself made by React. And it's coming from that tool we installed earlier, React Router DOM. And it's actually gonna we're going to nest the app component in our browser router component. So this is actually something we haven't seen before that a non-standard component, so a non-HTML component could be wrapped around something, but this is something we can do and we're doing it here. Um, and eventually if we had more time, I could cover how we can make our own components wrappable. So what we're doing here is we're initializing this router package and making it aware of this app component. And so we're gonna make sure it's watching the URL. Um, so does to say like, if the URL changes, then we're gonna change which route the app is loading, okay? So that app component comes straight from here, export default app, right? So that's what's getting loaded here on line 10. Give me a thumbs up when you guys, Ooh, I need to see these. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Let me know when you guys are good there. Just with a, a thumbs up or something. And then we can move on. <clears throat> excuse me. Cool. All right. And Salmon? Good seconds awesome okay so we have basically wrapped our app in a router and now our app our router is aware that the app can point to different routes <clears throat> and routes is the word for like different urls right that we want to point to okay so we added those three lines of code that's what the red underline is showing here in index.js now in app.js as a next step we need to define the URLs that we want to support in our app component. Okay, and which pages should be loaded when we visit those URLs. So we're gonna do this in the app component. It's in, uh, this is the wrapped component that we just wrapped with browser router. And in the, here, we are going to return, okay, this is the JSX code, line nine, we're returning a div. 
and we can leave, okay, just the div. So if I'm going to my Visual Studio code and I go to app.js, right now it's returning nothing. I'm gonna add a div, okay? And if I save this and I go to my file right now and I refresh, okay, I'm returning a div. That's fine, there's nothing happening right now, okay? I've returned a div and there's nothing in the div. So we can leave this, but we actually wanna be able to return different components depending on the route, okay? <clears throat> so inside the route, we're gonna add those, er, sorry, inside the div is where we're gonna add the routes. So we have to import something called React Router DOM here, okay? And how we do that is, I can actually get rid of this import here. Okay, because we're not loading the to-do anymore. That was from the code that we cut, so I'll delete that. Underneath line one, I'm gonna add an import to add the router DOM tool here. So we import something called capital R route, okay? From, you guessed it, the tool we installed at the beginning of class, React Router DOM. Okay, <clears throat> now, it says we're not using it. That's why it's a little bit grayed out. So we need to actually use it now. So just like the browser router that we used on index.js, route is also a component and we're gonna use it like a component, but the job of route component is to define the different paths in the URL that we wanna listen to and which components should be loaded for those different paths. So therefore I will also import the three pages we created in order for those pages to be loaded. So I'm gonna do a new line and I'm gonna import home from, and we have to do dot slash because it's to this folder. So we go up a directory into the pages folder, dot slash, and I can hit tab and do home. Okay, and then I can do that also for my other two pages, import, new page from, and it auto completes for me, which is nice. And I can import new second page and that auto completes. Okay, so this is a component and these are the components that we're gonna load. The route component is now gonna be inside of our div in this next step. Okay, we're gonna have to add it. <clears throat> so once you've got those imports listed, Give me a little thumbs up and then I will explain how we can add the routes. Cool. So you got your imports. So in the div here in the middle, I'm gonna enter and on a new line, I'm gonna start typing capital R route, right? So we're gonna use this component down here route like that, okay? And inside of the angle bracket here, okay? Not, not here, nothing goes in between the routes. So inside of the first angle bracket, we have a couple props, properties, right? So path, so the path that we want the user to have to navigate to in the browser. So this will be our home route because it's just slash. So basically what that means was, if I just do a little quick comment here, if we went to you know www.google.ca slash, or if you're on your local host, local host port 3000, and you're at slash, and there's, and there's no page, that's gonna be this route. So we'll, what do we wanna load at this route? Well, at this route, we wanna load the home page. Now in React Router DOM 5, there's a different way of doing this, but because we're using React Router 6, which is the new version that just came out, we use the element keyword. It used to be component, but they changed it in the new version of React Router. So you might, just so you know, you might see code out there that instead of saying element here, it says component like this, right? So now the new keyword is element and inside of this JSX curly brace expression, 
we load the component that we want to be loaded at this route. So I want the home page. So here I'm going to import from that line four from home page. I'm going to do tab and then I'm just going to load the home page and I can just use a straight up closing tag there. Okay, and that's it. So <clears throat> we've got a route at path slash, which is, you know, your root. Sometimes this is referred to as a root uh, or just, a, you know, the, the highest tag. It's your home page, and we want to load the home page. Well, if we go here, <clears throat> um, well, obviously it's going to give us some errors here because it's saying at home.js. Okay, so we're at slash here right now. This and this, same thing. But it's trying to load, it's saying to do is not defined. It's trying to load home.js. Well, if we go to home.js right now, okay, we have the to do component, but it's saying, hey, I can't find the to do component right now. That's what the error is. To do is not defined. I don't know what that is. Well, that's because we need to import it. Just like on our on our app.js here, we need to import home. We also need to import to do here. So before the function, the top of the page, we're going to import to do from. Now this is important here. You need two dots, dot, dot, slash. Okay. Components slash to do. There it is. So the reason you have to do dot dot slash is because we're in a folder called pages. So we need to go out of that folder and then we need to go up into the components folder. So we do another dot. And then now we're at this, the SRC, like we're up to parent directories. So if I could draw here, uh, let me get my drawing tool really quickly. I believe it's in my, So if I just draw for you here really quickly, okay, we are literally at this level, home.js. Going up one level is equivalent to one dot, okay? Now we need to go from the pages level up to SRC. So we need to go here. So that's another dot. Right? So that's why we have dot, dot. Now we want to go into the components folder. So that's the slash components, right? So now we're at components and then we go slash to do. Well, now we're at to do. Okay. So I know it's probably confusing, but you're basically going up to here, up to SRC, down to components, down to to do. Kind of like a, a big circle. Okay, so once you've imported that, <clears throat> we go here and we get another error. And you're like, what the heck? Oh my goodness, I hate React. React has so many errors and they're so hard to read. <clears throat> well, let's just pause for a second and let's see what's happening. A route, okay, route component. And this should be, we should recognize this because we just created it is only ever to be used as the child of routes element, never rendered directly, okay? Or never rendered on its own. Please wrap your route in a routes component. Okay, so let's take a look at our app.js. Well, here it's saying we have a route component, but it needs to be wrapped in a routes. So just like index.js was wrapped in browser router, we need to wrap route in routes. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do capital R or routes. And then I'll take the end tag there and I'll just, I'll just wrap it like this. Okay. So now our route is nested inside of routes. Okay. So it's a child element. Well, let's go see our page. Oh, oh my goodness. It failed to compile routes is not defined. Well, why is routes not defined? We saw this earlier when to do is not defined, right? 
basically it's saying, I don't know what you're talking about, what the word routes even stands for, what it means. Well, remember we had to import home. We had to import to do. So it makes sense. We have to import routes in order to use it. Well, we haven't imported it yet. So in the same, on the same line, we import route. We can just put a comma after it and then import routes, plural. Okay. So they both come from the React Router DOM package dependency. And now we're, we can use a route inside of routes. And if we load our page, well, there's our to-do list. Okay, and we're at slash, just the slash path. Very good, okay. Let me know if you guys got that working. Give me a little thumbs up and I can show you how we can add the other pages. Give you guys a sec to copy that down. It's going to be very similar to add the other pages. That unexpectedly, I close my uh, tab in my uh, in my browser, so I have to to restart again. I should write npm start. Uh, no, you can just you can just type localhost port three thousand. You go to this browser. Three thousand. Yeah, I'll type it in chat there. If you type that in, that should be the default hosting development server for your React app. It's showing me this thing, my to do list. The, the page it's open in your website. That's good. That's what we want to see, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, because because we moved our to-do list to home.js, right? And we basically just told app to load the home page when we're at slash, right? So if you see your to-do page, then you should be good. All right, Salman, are you okay if we move forward? Awesome. Okay, so to add another route, we just have to copy this line, line 15. So I'm just gonna do shift home, control C, and I'm gonna paste and paste two more lines. Okay, so instead of the slash, well, we can make this route whatever we want. I can make it new hyphen page. And then this other one, I can call it new hyphen second hyphen page, whoops, page. And instead of loading the home component, I want to load, well, let's look at line five and line six up here from our imports. I want to load new page and I want to load new second page. So I just type new page, there it is. And I type new second page. If I save this and I go to my browser and I go new hyphen page, right? That's the URL. If I hit enter, look at what we get a div that has the text new page in it. Well, how on earth would I be getting a div that has the text new page on it? Well, let's look at our new page.js. It returns a div that says new page. If I change this to say, you know, new page in an H1 now, So now it's in an H1 tag. Well, look at it. Now it's in an H1 tag. Great. So that is how you add routes. Okay, that is how you use the React Router DOM. So this is the code here for app.js. And make sure when you add those routes, okay, you have to have them wrapped in the routes tag. Okay, so when you are at, um, are you guys good? Did that work for you? Just test it in your browser. Give me a little thumbs up if it, if it works for you. I 
It's showing me error. Okay, what's the error? Error. Just a second. Error use routes may be used only in the context of router component. Routes may only be used in the context of a router component. Okay. Do you want to share your screen with me? Yeah. Use routes. Uh, where are you typing use routes? I am not. Uh, I have not typed use routes from anywhere. Okay, let's see your code. Yeah. Oh. Just a second. I will share my screen. Yeah. It's bigger, so I can see it. One sec. Okay. Routes. Route. 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 Oh, I know why. So do you see line 10? Line 10, you've typed routes with an end tag attached to it. Just get rid of that slash. Yeah. And then on your line 14, get rid of the slash as well and move it to the beginning. Yeah. Okay, now save that. Okay. Now load your browser. Okay, you probably have to save some of your other pages now, it looks like. Let's take a look at your other pages, like new page index.js, they're all unsaved. Yeah, so hit control S on all of those. Go back to your index.js for a second. Okay, browser router needs to be nested around app. So don't put a comma. And then hit enter there, like make a new line and move app in between it. Leave the comma where it is. Oh, you took the comma with it. Put the comma back after on line 12. Okay, hit save. Okay, and then save your home page, your new page, and your new second page. Okay, now load your browser. There we go. Now in localhost at the top there, go slash new dash page or whatever you made one of your routes. Slash. Go to your code. Go to app.js. You see how your route is new hyphen page in orange? That's what you need to type into the browser. And you can't have a space after the slash. Yeah. No spaces, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think you have a space at the end of it. And you have to save it before you can run it in the server. So control S, okay. And usually we make them all lowercase, just so you know. Yeah. So that in orange is the path, that's the URL. And then the green is the page or the component that will be loaded by React. Okay, so you can control C that, put that into the browser. Slash, yeah. And look at that, there it is. Okay, awesome.
Perfect. You can stop sharing. Okay, Salman, you said you have the same error. All right. I'll pause the recording here. Or Salman, you got it working. It says Oh, yours is working. Okay, great. We'll continue with uh we'll continue with with going on then. Awesome. Good work. Okay. Glad we solved that. Let me know if you can see my my code in my PowerPoint again. Okay. So you should be able to, when you visit localhost port, whatever port you're on, I, my port one, when I took the screenshot for this was 3001. Um, usually by default it's 3000, but I was running two projects. When you're at the slash port or just home, okay, slash port is the same as just, you know, nothing at all. Um, you should be able to see the to-do list. And when you're at slash new page right here, then you should be able to see our new page. Now, remember in our code, this right here is what we have to type in the browser, the orange, not the green. The green is just what's loaded because new page is going to show us whatever we have in here as HTML, right? Okay, so that is how routes work. So let's say we can switch between pages now successfully, but now we wanna be able to actually have a nav bar, right? So that we don't have to type in the URL at the top. Okay, so let's do that. We need to create a nav bar and to create a nav bar, we need to create a component to do that. So let's, in the components folder here, we're gonna right click on the components folder and create a new folder inside of the components folder called layout. It's going to be a child folder of components and inside of the layout folder, we're going to add a file and call it capital M main capital N navigation.js. So follow along with me here, right clicking on components, new folder, all lowercase layout, L A Y O U T on layout. I'm going to right click new file, capital main, capital navigation dot JS. Okay. And that is going to be our nav bar. Okay. So in our nav bar, same thing we've done with every other component so far, it's a function and the function is the same word as the title of the file main navigation. Give it some curly braces and we have to export it as our default right? Okay. And in here we have to return some JSX code, right? Well, it's a nav bar. So we want to use a header and in our header, we'll have a div and in that div, I'll call it react pages, or you can call it my website or you can call it whatever you want. And underneath the div tags, I'm going to make a nav tag. Inside the nav tag, I'm going to create a UL tag. Inside the UL tag, I'm going to create an LI tag. Okay. So you can get caught up to this point here and give me a thumbs up when you're caught up to this point. I'll pause the recording. Give me a thumbs up when you're, when you're ready to go. <clears throat> what we can do here. So UL and LI is a list element in HTML, right? So UL is an unordered list and an LI is a list item and they always go inside of an, a UL or an OL. And they're inside of the nav tag, which is going to tell it to do some navigation. Well, inside of LA, normally what you would do in HTML, don't type this out, just follow along because we're not actually going to use this. Normally you would do a href equals and then, you know, slash new page and do it a link like that in an anchor tag. This technically would work because it would be a link and it would tell the server, Hey, I want to go to this link and it would load that page. The disadvantage to doing it this way is that it will send a request to the server and it will reload. Okay. The HTML page 
that you are on already. And we, the whole point we're using router is to avoid sending requests to the server to load HTML pages. The only HTML page in this entire project is right here, index.html, right? And so since we're already on index.html and we're just loading components, depending on which route we're on, we don't want to have to send a request to the server. So instead of doing the anchor tag, I'll delete that, we use something that React built to handle this. And it's actually another component from the React package. So in my angle brackets, I'll do capital link like that. Whoops. And when I do it, I hit tab, capital link. Look at it imported line one link from React Router DOM. And I can go like this. I can close my link. And we have a link in here. And you can put text inside of this link, and that will be the text that shows. So I'll put home inside of here. The link component can be wrapped around text. So like what I just did here, and it will render in the background, it renders an anchor tag and react Dom attaches a click listener, but it prevents the browser from sending that HTTP request. And instead it just parses the URL to where we want to go and then routes to it and loads those components. So it loads the appropriate components and changes the URL, but it doesn't reload the entire page. So it'll be like Netflix where I showed you between my lists and movies earlier, it'll just switch instantly. In order for us to know which link we're sending to, we have to use a prop. But before I do that, save your file and let's, uh, let's look at our page here. I don't think anything will show because I haven't rendered. No, no, no. I haven't rendered it anywhere. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Inside of the link tag before the, uh, before the angle bracket there, I'm going to add a prop called two. And this is going to be the link. So inside of two, this is where I control which link I want that text when you click it to load. Well, I want the home page to go to the slash route. Okay. And now we can just duplicate. I'm going to grab my li and my link. So all three lines of code there, and I'm just going to enter and paste three times. So I'm going to have a link in my, my list items for three separate items for each page that I've created. So this one will go to new page and this one will go to new second page. And then we just have to update the link to be the same as the route, right? So I want this one to take me to new hyphen page, all lowercase. Remember the orange, the two is the, it has to be like the same as what the URL would show new second page, new hyphen, second hyphen page, just like that. Okay. So now when I click the words, new page, or I click the words, new second page, it'll take me to the corresponding URL. Let me know when you guys have that code <clears throat> and we will continue. Give me a little thumbs up when you guys are good. All good. I haven't seen any thumbs up yet, so I'm just waiting. Need a little bit more time. That's okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Cool. Rohan, you're doing all right. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we have our links, but we've created this component called main navigation, but we're not using it anywhere. So back to PowerPoint, we want to use this component somewhere. Well, we're going to add main navigation 
in app.js. So notice line four, I've imported it so that we can use it. And then line 13, before all of the routes, I'm gonna load main navigation, the component, so that no matter which route you're on, this will be loaded above it, like a component up here. And then anything that's underneath will be the route. So the header will always be there or the nav bar will always be there. So let's do that. Let's go to our app.js. We will import here, import main navigation from dot slash uh, components slash layout, because it's in the layout folder, slash main navigation and add our semicolon. Okay, so I've imported it. Now I want to put it <clears throat> right after line 14 above the routes on line 16. On line 15, I will type capital main navigation and closing bracket, closing tag. I save that, okay? And if we go to our web page, look at this. This is beautiful. So right now I'm at localhost port 3000 slash new page. And if I click the new second page text here, watch my URL, watch right up here. Instantly, it just changes. If I click home, it takes me to the to-do list. Yes. Sir, when I saved it, it's showing me compiled with warnings. Uh, warnings should be okay. <clears throat> okay. It's I've line any... four, eight, four, semicolon eight. What warnings did you get? <clears throat> Main navigation is defined, but never used. Oh, that's because you've imported it on line four, but now you need to use it. So see here, line 14. So I have to use it, use it inside the routes or? No, no, outside. no, outside of the routes. Okay. Because if we put it, uh, if we put it inside the routes, then it would only load. No, no, no. It wouldn't even work. It would break. <clears throat> the reason it works outside the routes, um, Rohan, the reason it yes, works sir. outside the routes is like, look here. If I draw this, maybe will help you understand it. So this is its own component. And then okay. everything underneath, which is going to be a page, will load depending on which one of these I click. Okay, so, so that is our data. So this will stay here. If I click new page or new second page, see how the, see how the navigation list is staying the same? It's not going yes. anywhere. That's because it's outside. It's on its own here. And then down here, I have all my routes. Right, so depending on which road I'm at, it loads new page or new second page or home. Yeah. Cool, that makes sense? Yes, sir. Good. Okay, cool. So you guys have that working, I'm assuming? Should be able to yes, switch like, like this, like instantly? Okay, great. Awesome. <clears throat> but so, in, me, in new second page, it's not showing me the new second page. Well, okay. what code? No problem. I, I have not tried it in that. No, it's working, sir. It's working. Like, okay. for, like if we go to, if we navigate to new page, it's written new page inside our our data, right? Yeah. Yep. So in new second page, it was not showing to me. But in I have new second page, yeah. Oh, that's because you probably have to return. Yeah. A div that says new second page in it or something. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So. Because we want our main navigation component to be rendered on all pages, we're putting it outside of the routes, right? That's basically it. So now we want to style it because it looks pretty ugly like this, right? It looks pretty gross. So let's style it. So how are we going to style it is actually kind of interesting. We can use it the same way. If you remember last week, we had index.css here, okay? Uh, where is it? Index.css. We did all of our styling in here. We've got card, buttons, etc. H1, H2, backdrop, modal, 
all the stuff for that. You can style inside of index.css. However, okay, for larger React projects, when you have many components, it kind of gets confusing because if I want to have a component that has buttons on it here, and I want to have a component that has buttons on it here, well, if I do a style for .btn or button, and I want these ones to be blue and these ones to be green, well, if I only am defining the styling in one spot, it's how can I make it different in two different spots? So it kind of gets really confusing. It's possible, but it gets really confusing to keep track of all of the classes and the styling classes that you're using in CSS. So what is cool, what React, the React team has done, and something that we get automatically when we use the Create React App template for this project is a tool called Modules. And basically it allows us to make a style sheet for every specific component. And then they stay scoped to each other. So those styles only belong to that component. So if I did want a component with green buttons, I could style for that component with its own style file. And then if I wanted a component with blue buttons, I could have its own scoped style sheet that would do blue button styling for that component. And they're all independent of each other. So Create React app allows for this feature. It's called CSS modules. Um, and when you create a CSS module, you'll notice, okay, here we have something called index.css. Well, that's fine, but if you want to use CSS modules, you have to call it, you'll notice here in my PowerPoint, .module.css, okay? This means it'll be scoped specifically and only to our main navigation component. So notice I made a new file in the layout folder here, called it the same main navigation dot module dot CSS. Okay, and then all we have to do is import that file in our main navigation file at the top. But when we import it, notice we're giving it a name. We called it classes. That's different from all of these other imports. That's because when we use this import, we can access that like an object and we can do classes dot whatever. And if we do classes dot whatever, then it will load the specific class from that file. Typically you can't um, load a CSS file in JavaScript like this, right? But because this, this isn't vanilla JS and we're already rendering JSX code, there's an extra build step in rendering all the components. So we can import CSS files at the top of a JavaScript file. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that step right now. In layout, on the layout folder, right click, new file, capital M, main, capital N, navigation, dot module, that's the important part, dot CSS. Enter, okay, we don't have to put anything in here right now. Actually, we'll put one thing in here right now, okay? In here, we're gonna make a class. Remember the way we make a class in CSS is dot and then the name of the class we wanna call it. So I'll call it header. And then we do our open curly braces and I'm just gonna do one property and value. And I'm gonna do color red, header color red. Okay, so control S and save that file. So that is our main navigation.module.css. Now, in main navigation, I'm going to close all these other files. So that's not confusing. In main navigation.css, we have to import this. Sorry, I just said the wrong name. In main navigation.js, we have to import this module.css file. So I'm going to click here. Underneath my first import, I'm going to add another import. We're going to give it a name. The reason we give it a name is so that we can access the header class we just made. 
and it will make sense in just three seconds. So just trust me here. So we give it a name called classes. Import classes from. Well, where is it coming from? Dot slash main navigation dot module dot CSS semicolon. Okay, it's a little grayed out right now because we're not using it. Okay, well, how do we use it? Inside of the header tag at the very end, remember we can give stuff CSS classes using the keyword class name. Class name equals, we do a JSX expression, and here's where we use this name classes dot Classes dot what? Classes dot header. Right? Classes dot header. Okay, so that's just what we added right there. This and this. If I had another header class in another component, okay, which I'm pretty sure I do. If I go to my index.css file, I'm pretty sure I have a header class in here. Uh, maybe I don't. Even if I did though, like if I created a header class in here, dot header color green, okay, no matter what, even though I have green there, because this is importing from main navigation.module.css and I'm using classes.header, in here there's a header with the color red. Well, when I load it, look at the header color is, you guessed it, red. Well, that's because the styles are scoped, as I just explained, right? So each file has its own scoping. So you, it's possible, I'm just going to delete this green one. It's possible to create custom styles for every single file. All right? Once you've got that, hey, you'll see here, this is a screenshot of everything I just did. Give me a thumbs up. So here's our main navigation module.css. Here's our main navigation.js.js. And here's our browser. And you should see red, a red header. Okay. Let me know if you get the red header. I don't think I can see your thumbs up, so just type something in chat when you get it working. this recording just because I don't want to be sitting here I'm just gonna watch this doom out. recording has resumed okay so we've got this working next step I'm gonna give you a custom CSS code in the chat now if it's not in the chat you can follow along in the video but if you're in class a little benefit for you you don't have to type it all out just have access to it um, to it. Whoops. There we go. So I will paste the code in the chat for you guys. See, paste. Okay, there's the code. Copy that, and then go to your main navigation dot module dot css that we just created. Okay, so the one where you made the header red. We can delete that so that it's a completely empty file so we can delete all the code from our module.css and paste what i gave you all right and it should look something like this so mine auto formats because i i set prettier on save to format the code which is actually really nice i like it a lot so we've got our header the width is going to be 100 percent all the way across the screen it's going to have a little background color of red like this a little bit of padding, and uh, we've got a logo class as well. And then we just have some some styling for um, 
like unordered lists and list items and anchor tag elements inside of our header, right? Now, if I scroll down, when you hover over an item on the header, it'll go white and a badge class um, that has a background color of pink with some white text, okay? So that is the CSS here. So if you are following along in the video afterwards, you can type this out, take a screenshot here, and I'll scroll down for you and take a screenshot here. Okay, so that is the CSS code. We can save this. Now, before we load our page, we need to add another class. So we need to do, um, here we can see we need to do classes.header in the header and classes.logo in the div. Okay, so there's your CSS code. So let's add those classes to the code. So I already have classes.header. So in the div here, before that end tag, I'm gonna give it a class name of, and in the class name, I'm gonna do classes. Whoops, it's in JSX code. Is that not working? Classes.logo. Okay, so classes.logo. So the only things you need is this class name and this class name, right? And you do need this import statement, right? And this classes is basically coming from here, right? The word classes is coming from here to this word classes. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Okay, and it's obviously it's also coming down here as well. Okay, great. Well, let's load our page. Let's see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So we can go to the new page, our new page component loads. We can go to the new second page, our new second page component loads. We can hit home, our to-do list loads. We click our to-do list, it works. Look at that, you have a fully functioning website. Obviously, it's up to you to put some uh, stuff here on the new page and the new second page for the assignment, right? But uh, I believe you can do it and get it working. So uh, I want to see- Can you show the last code again, please? Yeah. For main.net, yeah. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, that and that. So I can actually, it's actually on the PowerPoint too. Slide number 14. Right, so what your assignment is gonna be is to, uh, to get your website loading on uh, a page from your website to load on new page and a page from your website to load on new second page but they need to be, you know, as components. So you can use the code we built today in class um, to do that. And then when you submit that, I'll just test to make sure your website actually loads um, from there. Now, cool thing here, it's not designed for mobile, right? But remember, we made this a PWA. So I can actually open this PWA here because it's got a service worker. Now, this isn't styled to be responsive, sir, unfortunately. So what do you say for uh, assignments? I'll, I'll go over it in a second, okay? Yeah. So here, look at this, it's a PWA. So I can, this is actually downloaded on my desktop and it acts just like a desktop app would, but it's actually a browser. It's actually a web app, which is just the coolest thing. So there it is, cool. Um, so then it should look like this, obviously. All right, so. For your assignment, um, let me think here. Whoops, I'm trying to get this working. For your assignment, you will um, use new page and new second page to load, whoops. I don't know, I don't like how I did that. To load two different pages from your own design. This can be 
pages you submitted in the past for old assignments, or you can design your own new components. Um, the header should work and route between a home.js and two other pages. Um, for example, I know some of you have uh, used or created apps like Puppy Picker or Cat Explorer. The goal of this assignment is to re-create those web apps in a create react app format with routing and components. Oh my goodness. Okay. So <clears throat> whatever you submitted for your assignment to, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly all of your websites, but you know what you submitted for assignment to, you are converting your PWA into a create react app PWA. Okay. So it needs to have components. And routing. The routing and the components need to work. So it's not going to be, um, it doesn't need to be insanely detailed and have functionality like our to do. Um, the components can be static, they do not need to have functionality like the to do component from in class. However, if you can get this, get extra functionality like this working, it would be worth bonus points. All right. So if you want to pick up your mark in this class a little bit, then add some functionality. So button clicks or, you know, when you click something, you know, something happens and it adds it to uh, a list or a favorites menu or something like that, a to-do pop-up with a, with a modal like that or something. You can look up a lot of stuff for React. Um, please, all work must be your own. All work must be your own. This will be worth, uh, what was your last one? I think this is going to be worth 10%. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think that that's it. Any questions? Sir, what is our deadline for this? <laughs> Sorry? The deadline for this submission? Oh, I just heard laughing. Um, the deadline for the is submission that... will be the last. Sorry for the last that, uh, class. that's my little sister. Oh, no worries. She's harassing me, yeah. She's learning how to uh, code React. <laughs> no, she she just woke up and she comes in into my room and she's like, "Come on, don't attend your lecture, stay with me." And I said, no. <laughs> "Um, okay." So the deadline for this, the deadline for this would be the last day of class. So if I type that out, um, uh. Do December seventeenth, uh, eleven fifty nine p.m. All right. Any other questions?
Salman, you're good. Ro uh, Rohan, you're good. Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Oh, crap. Oh, no, it's still there. I'm going to take a screenshot of this <laughs> and make sure that I can uh, upload that for you guys to look at later. But uh, I'll end the recording here. That's all I've got for today. So I'll stop this. Yep.